guys, welcome to my new office. In this video, I'm going to share about how I created this uh, class simulation in Cinema 4D. And we are mostly going to talk about how I work with Substance 3D assets and how I'm customizing the materials that I download from there. So let's take a look. For example, what I really like about Samsung CDSS is that you can find tons and tons of uh, fabric materials. And for example, you can just open a material and the, uh, when you go to the web player, here you can play around with this, uh, with this material. So you can try how it would look with a different color. You know, you can test it. Okay, let's go crazy for example, like this, and um, you can just download the material as an SBSR or an SBS file. And after you downloaded the material, you can go to sampler. And here is this uh, little plus icon. When you go to your assets, so you go to this assets panel. So when you go to the uh, assets panel, you can find uh, all the library starter assets in your assets. You have to go to your assets. And here you can filter for example, the, all the fabric materials you have. Um, now I have, um, in this uh, simulation, I used uh, this concrete material that you can see here. Maybe let's find another camera angle that shows a bit more of that. So this, uh, this really, really nice concrete material, I also created with sampler. The only thing I added is a dirt, um, this dirt filter. You can see all these details, it's so nice. And all these little scratches and marks and whatnot. I really like this. Um, okay, so let's start a new material, new project. And uh, oh, this one, for example, I use this in my project as well. Let's change the tiling so we see a little bit more of the pattern. What I did is that I had a very uh, specific uh, color palette that I wanted to use for my scene. So I copy pasted uh, the hex code here and it was a kind of like a blue material. But here you can also absolutely like customize how you want this, uh, this uh, material to look like, add a little bit of metallic touch to it or anything, change the roughness, make it shiny. Here you can see it's so nice. And uh, when you're ready with this, you can basically export it. And um, here in, when you go to the share button, you can find export as. And here you have a lot of options that you can choose from. It depends on how you would like to use this later on. For example, I like to export my um, texture maps because I can use them in a little bit of a different way and in multiple multiple apps. For this, you don't need the opacity, but basically you can select your own channels, which one you would like to use later on. And uh, here you can, you can choose from all kind of all types of file, file, uh, files that you would like there. So I like the, the JPEG and you just name it and you select a folder for it and you click on export and then you export your textures. And, um, for example, this uh, texture came out like this. So I had, later on I changed uh, the color in, in Photoshop because I was like, it's it's fast. But uh, I got a base color, uh, glossiness, height, metallic, normal. I forgot to untick the opacity, so of course I have a specular and opacity, but um, I did not need that, I did not use it at the end. So if you, go to Cinema 4D, what you have to do is, um, I use red, red shift, so that's what I can talk about. Um, here you go to create a new standard material and you have to open the node editor and there you can basically drag and drop your, uh, drag and drop, drop your textures. So you can just basically drag and drop your 
texture maps and you already you can already see what is happening we will need the roughness and then you just connect them to to the notes to the right places so what you have to do is that you have to find a bump map and you have to find a displacement and that is how it's working so you get the haze map you connect it to the displacement you go to texture texture map and then you connect it to the displacement yep and then you take the normal map you connect it to the bump map and this you connect to this bump map node and what you have to do is that here you can change it to tangent space normal and it's going to work if something is going wrong you can flip the normal on the y-axis so and then you can change the direction yeah so this is how I built, um, built this material, but um, there is something else you have to do. Just let's try to find this material here. Yep. So here is this, and this is the material that you can see here. And I had a, yeah, this is a close up. And basically the trick is that you have to add a redshift tag. So when you go to right click, render text and redshift object. And here in the geometry, you have to untick this uh, displacement and also the tessellation. I don't know why I did not do this on this one. So this is how you can work with uh, with these these materials in, in in Cinema 4D, and I use this technique on all the objects, all the all the models that I had in this scene, and all of these materials are from from Substance CD assets. As you can see, this one is a. I really love this nice nice detail. I added some some dirt filter on it to make it a little bit more interesting and real and this is my all-time favorite this leather material this little holes in there it's just it just works really nice i just show you a little bit of this animation how how it looked and it turned out so well and here you can see So if I open the node editor, here you can see how the material is built, this, uh, this one. So this one had a opacity map for the little holes in there. So what, what I, I did is that just when I exported the material, I just untick this opacity and then I had a opacity filter, a opacity opacity map. And there is one more thing that I wanted to talk about, something that is really, really cool, I think, is that um, I created this, this type of material in Illustrator. So um, I created this, uh, just this stripey image in Adobe Illustrator from the, the colors I wanted to use in my, in my, my scene, art colors. And what I did is I just uh, dropped it on top of this ripstop fabric and I just changed the output usage to, to base color. So it means that um, sampler is using this image as a, as a base color and then basically you can, you can just um, export a completely unique, unique material for your project. I think it looks really cool. And here you can see it how it's working. I will try to find an example. Oh, these are mostly hiding at the back. 
Oh, maybe it is. Oh, here you can see. I will try to zoom in a little bit. This this material, it's like so detailed. I was very happy with uh, with the result how it turned out. And uh, this material is actually a paper paper material. Oh yeah, this is the this is the, the this uh, this purple material that uh, that I was uh, I was showing you in my render. I just added this dirt generator on top, and it's just like it looks really nice in my video. Here you can see the all the all the details and how how real this looks. The other type of assets that I really like to work with, and they work really well with this kind of uh, animations, are the paper materials from from Substance CD assets. And uh, here you can find a lot of really interesting materials. And uh, for example, in a in a class sim simulation, these these would look really nice as well. And you can just customize them the the same way. This, for example, this is the one I used in my scene. And then you can just, you know, customize it the way I did when you when you download it. So yep, here you can see this is also um paper material. This one with this graphic elements. And this one, my all-time favorite. There is one more thing I wanted to mention. That um, there is a box in this scene that I just wanted to put at the at the end of the line of where um, and all these uh, fabric stripes are located in a row. And I textured this um, box from. Um, soft and CD assets with painter. I will show you. So here is the box. Here you can see the scratches. I didn't do anything special. I just layered some materials on top of each other very quickly. And I hand painted the uh, hand painted some of these scratches on it because I know that uh, it will look really, really nice and realistic. And some metal edgeware, of course. And the trick is that I exported the mesh and the textures as well. And then I imported them in, uh, in Cinema 4D. The, the the mesh I mean and here you can see oops too much here you can see that um, you can just work with these materials just exactly the same way so you create a new uh, redshift material and then you just connect the textures and if you imp export the model from Painter and you import it in Cinema 4D, then the um, the textures and everything with the UV it will just it will just be perfect. So here you can see the normal map and the height map. And um, there is an option called Object Space Normal. You can also use this this option but um, you have to check what um, how is it working in, in in your scene and how how it looks which one is which one works works better because for me it did not uh, not necessarily I like this uh, this this better when it was just tendency face normal so Let's take a last look at this. Yep, 
this is how this scene looked together. If you have any questions, just uh, drop it in the comment section down below and I will try to answer it as fast as I can. And uh, thank you so much for watching and see you on the next one. Bye!